Hi again, part three of my uh, YouTube's three-part series on the Spectre Video Computers. And I must say that a lot of the information I got for this and the prior two episodes I got from a wonderful site on the net called Roger Sandal's Spectre Video page, and I'll show the link at the end. He's, he's got a wealth of information on there. And you may recall from part one of the series that the last computer I showed was the uh, SV or SVI-328. Now, a little history there. Apparently, a company called ASCII Corporation in Japan was responsible for developing the system software. And as it turned out, ASCII was also the Microsoft representative in Japan at the time. So, this company, ASCII, saw the potential in the Spectra Video computer line. And an initiative led by the ASCII president at the time was to make a world standard for home computers based on the design of that SV328. And it was called the MSX standard. MSX alternatively standing for perhaps machines with software exchangeability or Microsoft software exchange. Uh, but regardless, MSX would be the standard design allowing uh, same software and uh, hardware peripherals to be used on machines from a variety of manufacturers. So apparently our friend Bill Gates was on board with the MSX project early in the game, but over time he kind of came to realize that MSX could be a th threatened a threat to his uh, growing MS-DOS business that uh, Microsoft was working on with IBM. So he kind of bailed on it. But uh, whereas the SVI uh, 318 and 328 were ultimately not MSX compatible due to some hardware changes that uh, the MSX standard required, uh, Spectre Video was, well, shall we say to be nice, a little ambiguous in their marketing of the early computers, alluding to MSX compatibility. And to be kind of more blunt, they more or less misrepresented their early computers as being specifically able to run MSX software and use MSX hardware, which as it turned out they couldn't. But uh, late in 84, keep in mind that they were still selling that 328 that same year, and uh, but they did come out with this uh, SV327, which I have one here, which was a true MSX computer. And it saw some uh, really good success in Europe and elsewhere, except North America, which really didn't take to this MSX standard. So let me pop this one open and let you have a look. Okay, so here we have the SVI-728, uh, uh, Spectre Video's first MSX compatible computer. And note the design is somewhat similar. Gone is the... Uh, uh, proprietary cartridge slot now replaced with uh, a larger slot which takes uh, MS cartridges and MSX cartridges were produced by a number of different companies uh, Konami was one major producer I actually have a couple of uh, MSX games for this for this computer uh, not too many I have uh, a box Sony Super Golf and Antarctic Adventure. The Antarctic Adventure uh, that plays on the MSX is almost indistinguishable from the Coleco uh, offering of uh, Antarctic Adventure. Other than the two I showed previously, the two uh, games I showed previously, I have uh, a number of other, not too many, but a number of other MSX cartridges and they're all um, Zemix or Zemina um, fairly rare games from Korea. Uh, here's one boxed. A couple more boxed. And uh, a lot of these are semi-bootleg, shall we say. This one's like a Wonder Boy clone. Superboy. Well, some of them have just very generic labels on them. Although, hello, although I only have a few, um, these ones are pretty rare and my puppy likes them. Uh, because of the common design, um, 
this computer it would be uh, compatible with with most if not all standard MSX uh, third-party hardware and here and now I want to show you my uh, final uh, Spectre video computer and this was the SVI 738 commonly referred to as the uh, the Express and it's kind of laptop size although obviously it has no screen again the same MSX standard cartridge port uh, full travel keyboard really nice computer built in uh, three and a half inch floppy drive joystick ports connectors for various peripherals this uh, pops down and exposes some different ports this part here kind of folds out and becomes a bit of a uh, stand for it. It folds down and as you can see we have access to uh, standard RS-232 serial ports. Uh, an expansion uh, port there for a external disk drive. Uh, that looks like an RGB type of, uh, or is it a Centronics type of port. Other various connectors were available here, power supply and so forth. I also have, I'd like to show you, another external three and a half inch uh, drive that just plugs in to the back, doesn't require a power supply and uh, with this computer you can run uh, MSX games through the cartridge you can run all the MSX software that uh, was available on diskette and um, There was actually later on an MSX2 standard uh, with some advanced capabilities and apparently, what I'm led to believe, somebody handy with a bit of soldering uh, knowledge and, and the right uh, pieces can actually, I'm led to believe, fairly easily uh, change this into an MSX2 compatible uh, computer. Well, I keep 